As Hurricane Milton barreled through the Gulf of Mexico towards Florida on Wednesday, officials warned that time was running out for evacuations, with survival chances slim for those choosing to stay behind. Still wreaking havoc across much of central Florida, making landfall, as you mentioned, about two and a half hours ago. Notice the disparity across the southern part of the storm and across the north. Exceptionally heavy rain, dangerous wind still occurring all the way from Tampa up toward Orlando. South of that, where the storm made landfall, we're watching that dry air coming back in and weakening the southern part, but still a very large uh, storm across the central part of the state, and it still is going to be occurring overnight and really some more damage. We're going to go back quickly, looking back to about time that made landfall just west of Sarasota, that being the case around 8.30 p.m. Notice again, the storm putting down exceptionally heavy rain north around Tampa, where excessive flooding is occurring and will continue for the next couple of hours. Quick look at the forecast continues for the overnight hours till about 3 or 4 in the morning. That's when that rain band and the strongest winds begin to move from Orlando up toward Daytona Beach. Finally, the storm exits Florida very early in the day tomorrow with some leftover showers and storms behind that. But cleanup will begin in the light of day tomorrow and probably go on many spots for days or weeks to come. Milton intensified to a Category 4 storm on Wednesday morning after briefly reaching Category 5 status on Tuesday. It's headed for the densely populated Tampa Bay area, home to over 3.5 million people, which has remarkably avoided a direct hit from major hurricanes for more than than a century. With rain already falling and winds gaining strength, Milton is threatening communities still recovering from the devastation caused by Hurricane Helene just two weeks earlier. Millions have been ordered to evacuate. Local authorities in Tampa Bay are using every available communication method to urge residents to leave high-risk areas. By this morning, the typically congested highways into downtown Tampa were eerily empty and only a few cars moved through side streets. Drivers searching for fuel found most gas stations either closed or boarded up in preparation for the storm. The National Hurricane Center warned that Milton is expected to remain an extremely dangerous major hurricane as it approaches Florida's coastline. And if you need any further proof of Donald Trump's anti-American stance, He's been lying to the public about the federal response to hurricanes, Helene and Milton, putting innocent lives at risk and politicizing an extreme weather event that could have been prevented if only they'd heeded the warnings of scientists and believed in climate change. The people of Florida and all the impacted states, we've got your back. We've got your back. And Kamala and I will be there for as long as it takes to rescue, recover, and rebuild. Florida environmentalists say that DeSantis's policies to boost fossil fuels, suppress carbon-free energy, and ignore global heating have fueled the climate crisis that has exacerbated such hurricanes. Hurricanes are becoming more dangerous due to the climate crisis caused primarily from the burning of fossil fuel. DeSantis's opposition to climate action began early in his career. One day after taking office in 2013, the then-congressman voted against a measure proposed after Hurricane Sandy to guarantee people could collect on federal flood insurance claims. During his 2018 run for governor, he pledged to protect Florida's Everglades and waterways. But though he admitted human activity contributes to changes in the environment, he also said, I'm not a global warming person. More recently, he's gone further, slamming climate action as woke and Democrat stuff. What I found is people, when they start talking about things like global warming, they typically use that as a pretext to do a bunch of left-wing things that they would want to do anyways. And so we're not doing any left-wing stuff. There is ample evidence that warmer ocean temperatures fuel powerful storms, and preliminary studies show that these hurricanes' strength was made far more likely by global heating. Yet as Florida was battered by record-breaking rain this past June, DeSantis staunchly denied any potential link to the climate crisis. Vice President Kamala Harris had harsh words for Governor Ron DeSantis after the Republican dodged her calls ahead of Hurricane Milton's landfall in Florida. DeSantis decided not to respond to offers for emergency assistance from the vice president because her calls seemed political, according to one of his aides. People are in desperate need of support right now, Kamala Harris said, and playing political games at this moment in these crisis situations, these are the height of emergency situations, is utterly irresponsible. And it's selfish. And it's about political gamesmanship instead of doing the job that you took an oath to do, which is to put the people first.
DeSantis also quietly helped craft a ban on wind energy infrastructure in Florida. He also signed a far-reaching energy omnibus bill, boosting the gas industry and increasing the barriers to purchasing electric vehicles in a state that sees more extreme weather than most. While in office, Donald Trump was hesitant to send aid to areas where people voted against him, such as wildfire-stricken California, according to two former White House staffers. You know, my biggest concern now is that whilst disinformation and therefore confirmation bias has screwed up our divided nation, when it comes to natural disasters, we're now seeing a partisan response from Republican leadership and consequently a MAGA brainwashing response from some citizens who refuse to heed the evacuation and safety warnings of the mainstream media, as Trump has been telling them now for almost a decade that it's fake news and that the media is the enemy of the people. So when a hurricane hits or even another pandemic comes, MAGA Republicans will be stranded, injured or even die at a greater rate than Democrats who trust the national news services. We saw this during the COVID-19 pandemic with evidence that personal political leanings contributed to excess deaths. The research builds on previous work that has shown that right-wing red counties had higher death rates during the pandemic than more left-wing blue counties. The study looked at deaths in both Florida and Ohio during the first 22 months of the pandemic and found the overall excess death rate of Republican voters was 15% higher than that of Democrats. The gap widened further to 43% once the COVID-19 vaccines were introduced. So when Republicans think it's funny to lie about the federal disaster response just to own the libs, they purposefully ignore that there are lives at stake. Maybe Republicans don't value human life like normal people do. Despite their claims of being pro-life, which is in direct contrast with their pleasure born of mass shootings, I call it an uncivil war. Under Project 2025, authored by numerous Trump officials and is now effectively the policy of the Trump administration, the federal forecasting of severe storms and aid given to shattered towns and cities would be drastically scaled back. Emergency management officials say the cuts would severely worsen the outcomes of a storm like Milton. Project 2025 calls for breaking up and downsizing the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which it calls a primary component of the climate change alarm industry. The agency's climate research is harmful to future US prosperity and should be disbanded, the document says. If enacted, the playbook would also radically reimagine the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, ending its federal flood insurance program, the country's top federal flood insurance provider, and shrinking its disaster aid. With the Federal Emergency Management Agency reeling from major staffing and funding shortages amid the impact of the recent hurricanes, House Speaker Mike Johnson refused on Sunday to commit to reconvening the House before Election Day to aid recovery efforts. In response to a letter from President Joe Biden urging congressional leaders to come back to replenish federal disaster loan funding, Mike Johnson said he'd only do so after the election. Johnson pointed to the $20 billion Congress allocated for FEMA as part of a stopgap measure, then returned to his previously scheduled attacks on undocumented immigrants, who Johnson inexplicably blamed for the shortfall. In reality, migrant relief efforts represent less than 3% of FEMA's total annual budget, and the shortfall would still be there if these efforts stopped. And now we have Hurricane Milton, a far more devastating hurricane, but funds for its relief are clearly being held to ransom by Donald Trump. Trump is undoubtedly telling Johnson not to bring Congress back for a vote, just as he vetoed the bipartisan immigration bill, just as he likely pressured Benjamin Netanyahu not to agree to a ceasefire in Gaza. Donald Trump won't rest until the entire planet is on fire. He's angry and seeks retribution for being held accountable for his crimes. And yet somehow, in this lawless country, he's being allowed to run for president. If he wins, some say America will get what it deserves. I'm Anthony Davis. You can find me on the 5-Minute News YouTube channel and podcast. 
on Wednesday co-hosting Uncovered, and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.